why do people not say yes to you all the time? This is my take on it. Why do people not say yes to us every single time? I'm talking about relationships, business, selling, team members, uh, just you name it. Why do people not just say yes every single time? I want you to listen to it like, how can I apply it? Or what's missing in the way that I'm acting and being. There is a psychological aspect to this, but I'm sure that we can all do always, no matter how effective we are at having people say yes to us, are becoming even more effective. So why do people say no to you? Uh, fear, there are like their own fears, their own uncertainties, their own misinformation, their own information, their own lack of information, mistakes that they've made in the past, or their upbringing conditioning, or a valid or legitimate reason to say no. So this kind of implies we need to get, get to the source of why people are saying no. So uh, I, I guess one of the things that stood out to me was the three categories of information, misinformation, information, and lack of information that stood out is there anything in here that uh, someone has a question about that they want to share Anton yes when you said about the misinformation information and inf a lack of information mm -hmm. um, I was delivering training yesterday and I was told nine times out of ten what we think we communicate Mm -hmm. is not really no. what others hear. We need somebody who knows, I think, nothing about what we do mm. to read and go, what's your interpretation of this? Absolutely. Because we assume a lot of prior knowledge, don't we? Okay. I think I think for me, Anton, mm -hmm. when I look at this slide, two things that sort of come stands out to me is context and enrollment. The context with everything is decisive, right? So if you're whatever, if you're selling or just having a conversation with someone that you, you want them to be enrolled in, and I use the word involvement, if the context to which you're engaging in the conversation with them isn't over there in the world of where they are, they're not going to be enrolled and they're always going to get them up. Oh, and they're going to say no. I got it. Okay, and thank they, you. And they're going to say no. Yeah, great. So the first fear, the, the first type, there's like buckets of fears, if you like, and there's probably many more, but fear of wasting their own time, fear of making a mistake in their choice, fear that they're going to be taken advantage of, fear that, that they're going to look bad to others if they go ahead with this thing, fear that they're going to waste your time because they know that they're not really serious about it. And in the same kind of subcategory, fear that it's not worth your time to talk to them, fear of being pressured, and fear of being relentlessly followed up okay these are the main kind of categories that people have i like that you know so which ones stand out to you or which ones do you relate to hey alexa headache alexa <laughs> it's the fear of being being taken advantage of dom please for me is uh, fear of being followed up oh yeah <laughs> don't keep hassling me yeah i get it man i got i got that one too mate that's yours? Okay. You don't want to yeah. get people on and, the hook. And, and, yeah. and wasting my time, like just wasting my time and being relentless followed up. Those yeah. two jump out to me. I like it. David? I just say that people have a fear of saying yes. I found that the best decisions that you make in your life are when you say yes. Mm. What are the, the reasons that people say yes? Let's look mm. at the, the, mm. the positive thing. I agree. Actually, the key is to have people say yes, ultimately, despite their fears and concerns. Kevin. Just oh. uh, the fear of wasting time, uh, because as the old saying, time is precious for me. Okay, got it. So how to handle fears? The first thing is to stay in the communication with people when they have fears and concerns. Communication is the best way to handle people's fears and concerns, okay? Stay in communication and be willing to ask hard questions. Be vulnerable, risk rejection. And this is really interesting because there's a lot of powerful people in this room, but none of us, I don't think, are immune to the fear of being rejected, right? Anyone want to say anything about that slide? I'm happy to just move on. Any thoughts? Yes, Dom. Address the elephant in the room. Don't be afraid to address the elephant in, in the yeah. room. You can just talk about it, address it. The main issue may extinguish itself rather Absolutely. than just keep it. I love it, man. And you can ask permission. Yes, David. Do, does everybody have a, an objection handling process that they do? that is part of their sales process. So when someone, an objection comes up, they just go, okay, this is what I do. The thing about these hard questions, these are just examples. And remember they're selling type examples and they can be modified, I guess, for the rest of our lives as well. But why haven't you done this already? Have you ever done something like this before? 
What's your real concern? If I handled everything for you, are you in a position to make this change or do this thing? Uh, other than yourself, who needs to be involved? How can you justify spending this much? All of these are hard questions that salespeople generally don't want to ask and they're leading to uncovering the objection. Any thoughts coming up so far? I must admit, Anton, I'm now thinking about the fact that, you know, our, our bodies like to have habit and we like to be comfortable. And so when maybe when you're selling me something, it's, well, that's out of my comfort zone. Mmm, I like it. And so it's trying to get people to feel that they will be safe. I love that. I've never thought about it like that. That's why we get together. The most dangerous objection is the unspoken one, the one that they're not saying while they're talking about their other objections. And they're gonna do this. Like we have a defense mechanism and the defense mechanism is gonna throw at them the thing that they think is going to back you off. They'll have a way of backing people off. They've learned this and it works successfully to them. And so they're going to use it nine times out of 10. If it doesn't work, they'll try something else and then they'll try something else, but they don't wanna tell you what is really their objection. Because if they tell you what's really their objection, then if you solve it, then what are they going to do? So here, the objection type, because if you can isolate which one it is, then you can handle it, okay? Price, terms, contract, product, timing, the company, you, and competition. That is powerful stuff. If you can work out which of those things it is, you can always have people say yes, you know? But whatever their objection is, then you want to determine, is their objection valid or invalid? So here the steps are listen, acknowledge, isolate. Now to isolate the objection, we want to find out if there are multiple concerns because normally there's just only one. That's the interesting part. I got that for myself as well, but they're not going to say one. They're going to say a bunch of things, but we want to find out what is their actual genuine real concern and isolate it. Then we want to validate to determine that it's real. Then we want to determine the type. Then we, and once we've tied it down to only one, then we can handle that and we can have them say yes. Okay. And that is pretty much it. Thank you so much, everybody, for empowering each other this week. I really look forward to seeing you all again next week. Bye, everybody. Bye. Take care. Have a good weekend, everyone. Bye, guys. See you guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.